Vince, you've written that, quote, this turned out to be the biggest small building of the second half of the 20th century, <laughs> end quote. You said it initiated revivals of interest in vernacular and classical architecture for the next 30 years. Can you elaborate a bit on that? Well, I think that did happen. I mean, and it was like Bob's complexity and contradiction, of course, in 1966, where all of a sudden I felt that people hadn't really been, for a long time, people had just been chanting slogans. Foreign follows mm -hmm. function, so on. Nobody thought, didn't mean anything. And... Uh, all of a sudden, Bob began to talk straight and began to use everything. And it didn't close things out. So the, the, this, the background of this, the drawings that go into this, not only back into calm, but into mm. medieval architecture, Renaissance mm. architecture, mm. scale of it. The whole of history, in a curious way, mm. is in this fine little house. I was introduced to that idea of the significance of, and the importance of the vernacular by Denise Scott Brown. And when you're looking at the everyday, she helped me with that. One thing that's always struck me about this house, compared with its prototype, the Beach House Project of 59, is that house is shingled. And in a sense, it does have a connection with the shingle style. When you come to this house, you get rid of the shingles, and you get something that really looks more like a model. It doesn't, you don't think of the material very much in this house. Do you think? Mm. I mean, it's an abstract mm. plane, whatever. You know, I'm Okay, well, I, first of all, it was in this area where you couldn't use shingles to be... You couldn't... Uh, yeah. it, it wouldn't allow you. Wouldn't it allow. had to be a, yeah. a fireproof and all that yeah. stuff. But uh, the shingle style was extremely important to me, and I enjoyed reading that while I was in... It was full of irony here. While I was in, in uh, living in Rome... And loving it, and the every day, the, the the Baroque and the grand architecture of Rome, but at the same time learning again about America from. And this was one aspect of America, which was just thrilling, to, uh, to look at the ordinary shingle stone. In those days, it's hard for you know people of the younger generation to realize how ghastly Victorian architecture was, and even Edwardian architecture. It just blah. You could appreciate the 18th century architecture, the colonial architecture, all that stuff. But um, this other stuff was not likable. And it's so wonderful to learn that he's had, and I had fun at that time growing up and learning from the wrong sources. And, and we, had, we had a phrase, I can like something worse than you hmm. can. <laughs> Is that wonderful, uh, what is her name, the lady, the female who was writing at that time also in an unusual way of the importance of the everyday and community? And oh, the great Jane Jacobs. Jane Jacobs, oh, of yeah. Course, of yeah. course. And she was so important. At the time, <laughs> I didn't really know what she was doing very much. I wasn't very aware of her. So uh, what I was saying was sort of in parallel. But I That's right. Kind of, and I didn't yeah. either. In yeah. the sense, we all we came to the sense of community yeah. later. Yeah. So I, I really wasn't looking at what was happening at that time. It just didn't particularly interest me. And I didn't think that was the right approach exactly, but that was, that was the situation. And then, of course, I went and looked at the everyday of Las Vegas with Denise, who corrupted me by taking me to Las Vegas. And I love that photograph of us in a car. I'm driving the car, and she's sitting next to me, and we're going up the strip. I don't know, someone took that picture. I kind of love it. Um, that was very important. It was around when she invited me to um, L.A. I think something to keep in mind is that their book, The Five Architects, is a re reaction to Bob's book of 1960. That book would never have been written mm. if Bob hadn't written uh, his book about architecture. You can see yeah. how things were lively in those days. Yeah. There was a Yale Penn axis, wasn't there? Yeah. We defended ourselves against all yeah. Cornell and New York and all that. <laughs> they really were quite wonderful times. We were digging ourselves out of a great pit, you know? Yeah. That yeah. modernism had dug. Yeah. We were digging ourselves out and we it. weren't sure where yeah. we were going. Yeah. We were reaching for the light. But again, I was I was really not thinking in terms of setting up an I what's the word I want? Uh, setting up a a school or an ideal of no. thought, but just of 
dealing with dealing with now. And then, oh, incidentally, if that became a kind of theoretical, ideal school, that's all right. And you know something that's very important? I don't think you ever use the word theory. Could be. Yeah, I never yeah. did. Yeah. I, mean, I, I did I, give this course at Penn on, it's theoretically on, it was uh, called theory because uh, Holmes Perkins said, I want you to give a course. Yeah, yeah. And I said, why? I never heard of it. I never took a course on theory. <laughs> and he said, well, you went to Princeton and you're the only one who knows something about history. So yeah. I did it. And out of that came all, all this stuff. It was good. But the trouble with that is that the architects then used theory yeah. as a way to avoid history. You're they, so they right. They take history yeah. and mold it the way they wanted it. God, I, I have a phrase, I can take care of my enemies. God save me from my followers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. You're misunderstood in that way. Yeah, especially that so-called so-called postmodernism. Oh my God, it was a nightmare, really. Denise and once we, said, "We constantly uh, get tarred with that brush." Oh, Denise uh, once said, uh, uh, "Marx is not a Marxist, and Freud is not a Freudian, <laughs> and Venturi is not a postmodernist." It's a bit pretentious, <laughs> but it was yeah. fun. That's true. Yeah. Well, I think with the modern day, in a way, you could take Putin who's the object of a wonderful book now. And Puchin really does introduce a whole new set of things that are irrelevant, but they're very necessary at that time. Morality and architecture, right? Mm -hmm. and, the, and the way Puchin uses it is wonderful, you know? This mm -hmm. book is good. You know, it's we, a book on Puchin. I have to, I'll have to order that. Oh yeah, it's good, Bob. It's so good. And then you realize, you realize how he well, yeah, I really wouldn't realize it anyway, but you make how the whole Garden City movement, say Hampstead Garden Suburb, they're trying to build a Pugin world. They're trying to build Pugin's drawing, for example. They're trying to build the House of Parliament. Anyway, I think it starts then. It starts with, I suppose, the same old thing. It starts with the middle class, which wants to, things to be good. Good, uh, good architecture must be done by good people. Very Victorian idea. I think it started then and it got confused, got complicated. And, the, and then I think modernism is a kind of reaction against all that, except they, they picked it all up. Gropius picked up Morris and that whole English theoretical thing. And I think what Bob did was really, I think it had become just a cult. You just chanted slogans. It didn't mean anything anymore. Bob looked at it afresh, in new terms. And everybody hated that because everybody hates to have the the, the, the abstract picture of reality that you hold in your mind and which protects you from the reality of the world, you hate to have that broken. All of a sudden it floods in, anything might be true. And Bob made all that possible. So there's no question about it for a time. Mm. So they hated him for it. Mm. Just the way they hated the photograph of his mother sitting in the kitchen chair right here in the great symbol of the circle and the square, which is the great male symbol of the domination of the world. I love the way he wrote about that. It's really <laughs> great. It is true. But I do think the development of the new urbanism is extremely important. It's fundamental. It's constantly being left out of the equation. The schools never mention it. I do. I, I think all the other stuff, the, the forms, the quick forms, the quick fixes of strange forms and so on, the work itself out, some of those are very contextual, some of those, especially by Frank Gehry, work very well with their cities. Some of it works for, I think the whole idea of the city has come out of this. I think now people are working and thinking in relation to the city. The whole great movement toward preservation, toward historic preservation, which is a fundamental mm -hmm. historical force. Bob suffered from preservation groups early in your career, didn't you? And preservation groups now still sometimes are silly, but the general whole thing there, means that the people are involved in the whole environment. It can't help but be very good. That came out of that period. So good things have come out of it. Our experience of it today was, I thought I knew yeah. it. Yeah. We enriched it. Yeah, it's fun. You know it. It's fun to come back, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. What a day! God must have heard that Vincent Scully was coming. Yeah.